Good morning. Uh, today we are doing a mini lesson on scientific notation to begin with. I know you don't have this slide on your notes, um, but this is just what we're going to use to talk about what scientific notation really is, and then we'll get to talking about how we write um, a number from standard form, which is just a regular old number, and convert it to scientific notation. So first, scientific notation is used to represent really big numbers. If I asked you how many miles it was from the Earth to the Moon, it would be a really big number. So instead of writing a number that has a whole bunch of zeros after it, we write numbers in scientific notation. It's like a shorthand way to write. Same thing if I asked you um, how big um, one cell was in inches. It would be like 0 .00000000 something inches, right? Really, really small. So Instead of writing out all those zeros, we write a number in scientific notation, which is in the form c times 10 to the power of n. Now c is a number that's between 1 and 10. So it could be 1.5, it could be 8.76, it could be 9.89, uh, some number out front here that's between 1 and 10. Then that number needs to be multiplied by 10 a whole bunch of times in order to get this really big number that you maybe started with, like 3 billion. Um, so the n, the exponent, tells us how many times we're multiplying by 10. So how many times we're really moving our decimal from the n over to get this number between 1 and 10. Now with the small numbers, the decimals, like 0, .00 something, the number or the exponent is a negative because negative exponents, let's say it was negative 5, let's say this was your number, negative 5, we would really put this on the bottom, so instead of multiplying by 10, you'd really be dividing by 10, which would make the number smaller. So if you look at the two examples they have, 2 million in standard form is just 2 million in scientific notation, they move the decimal over to be in front or after the 2, 2 point nothing, and they multiply by 6 10 times. So multiplying by 6, they'd have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 zeros. Move the decimal point 6 times. Same thing here with a 5. Here's 5. They move the decimal 3 times. 1, 2, 3 divided by 10 3 times to get this number. Um, we're going to go through some of these examples together. First, we're going to look at writing in scientific notation. So we want a number between 1 and 10 times 10 to the power of some exponent. Now one thing I would tell you here that might be helpful to write down is that your positive exponents are for big numbers greater than 1 and our negative exponents are for small numbers less than 1. So here our decimal points at the end to begin with, this is in standard form, we need to convert it to scientific notation. So I need to move this decimal over to get a number between 1 and 10. Now I'm going to ignore all of the zeros at the end right here. Um, we have 4259. If I put the decimal right here, 4.259, that will give me a decimal or a number between 1 and 10 to begin with. Now how many times do I need to multiply by 10 to get to this original number? Well, I'd have to multiply by 10 1. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 times. So that's why my exponent is a 7, because I take this number, multiply it by 10 7 times, and I would get the original number. Same thing with the next one. Ignore the zeros on the end. If I put the decimal here, 3.412, I get a number between 1 and 10. Oops, I wrote that wrong. 412. Now how many times do I need to multiply by 10? Well, the decimal should go on the end, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 times. This next one, 104.25, is not a number between 1 and 10. There's no zeros on the end, so there's no numbers I can leave off, but 1.0425 would be between 1 and 10, and we would need to multiply by 10 only 1 two times. Alright, let's look, take a look at the next one. There's only one zero on the end that we don't really need here, so my decimal is there to begin with. I need to move it way over here to get 
0.1562. And then how many times do we need to multiply that by 10 to get this big number? Well, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the exponent is a 5. Next, we're going to go down and convert from small numbers to scientific notation. Same thing, we're going to ignore the zeros right now. We have 4, 5, 6. So if I put a decimal after the 4, that will give me 400, or not 400, 4.56. That's a number between 1 and 10. And I would multiply it by 10 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 times. I'm sorry, not multiply. This number I would have to make smaller to get 0 .000. So we're dividing meaning we have a negative exponent because it would really be on the bottom if it was a negative exponent. So we move this one, two, three, four, five spots. Same thing here, we don't need the zeros in the front. We have 8.104 would be a number between 1 and 10. So we need to divide by 10 one two times, so it's a negative 2. All right, next, again, ignore all the zeros in the front. We have 3.04. We would need to divide by 10 how many times? Well, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. So negative 7. Last one. Uh, if I put it here, that's 0.2. That's not between 1 and 10. I need to move it back here. So that's 2 point nothing. And we're dividing by 10 1, 2, 3 times. So it's a negative 3. Now we're going to just do the opposite. We have some numbers in standard form. We need to write them in scientific notation. So to do this, we start by just writing down the number, 2.0075. And then we're going to move our decimal six spots in whichever way it says. Well, we know six is going to make our number, it's a positive number, so it's going to make this number bigger. So making it bigger would go to the right. Or think of your number line. Which way would positive numbers be? Well, positive numbers are to the right. So you're going to move your decimal six spots to the right. One, two, three, four, five, six, and fill it in with zeros. So if you want to rewrite it, you can. 2,007,500. All right, let's try another one. 1 1.685. We're moving this time four spots, but it's negative. Negative numbers are to the left. So one, two, three, four and fill in every loop there with a zero, unless there's already a number there like that first one. All right, next we have 7.001235. We're moving five spots to the left because it's a negative number, making it smaller. We're dividing by 10, one, two, three, four, five times. So some people think that the exponent means that's how many times, or how many zeros there are. That's not the case, because here it says negative 5, and there's only four zeros. So it's how many spots you're moving the decimal. This one we're going to move seven spots. Positive 7 is to the right. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And fill in with zeros. And that is our answer. If you want to put commas in here after every 3, you can. There's a big number. All right, last couple here, we have 1.211, and we're going two spots. Negative is to the left on your number line, or dividing by 10 two times, making it smaller. Uh, this one, you can see right away that we're going to go negative nine spots to the left, so leave some space here. 3.02056, going nine spots. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. This one is a really small number. There's a lot of zeros out front there. These last two I'd like for you to try on your own. And then click play. So we're moving this one six spots. One, two, three, four, five, six to the right. And that would be your answer. This one's only two spots, one, two. So this one would just be 101.2. All right, next we're just going to compare two numbers um, and complete the statement using less than, greater than, or equal to. 
You can com uh, compare them in scientific notation, so we can convert this to scientific notation, or we can convert this to standard form. I'm going to convert to standard form because it just seems easier to me. Moving our decimal five spots, one, two, three, four, five. So we really have the number four, zero, four, zero, zero, one. So which is greater, 404,000.1 or 400,001 point nothing, really. You can put a zero on the end there. It doesn't really mean anything because the decimal is still in the same spot. Well, the, this one has a one here, so that one's got to be bigger than zero. So this one on the right is a little bit bigger. Next, we have 3.309. We're moving our decimal three spots to the left. So we have 0 0.003309. So this one is 0 0.003309. Those are the same. Those are equal. If you want to put the zero out front there, you can. It doesn't do anything. Uh, third one like this, we're going to move seven spots. I'm just going to leave it where it is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we have two zeros on the end there. So this one's 60,000, this one's 604,000. So we know this one on the left is bigger. All right, next it says order the numbers in scientific notation. Um, so it says scientific notation, so I'm gonna convert these all into scientific notation. Whoa, crazy, let's fix that. Um, so this first one is not in scientific notation. So let's move this decimal over so we have a number between 1 and 10. Oops, that's an eraser. So we have 1.034 times 10 to the power of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And this one over here, same thing, 8.076 times 10 to the power of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So of these three numbers, this one's already in scientific notation. The first two have the exponent of 8, which means they're multiplied by 10 8 times. This one's only multiplied by 10 7 times. So even though this 8 is bigger than both of those numbers, it's multiplied by 10 less times. So it has like one less zero on it. So that's the least number. So the smallest exponent will always be the smallest number. So if, even if it's negative, that means there's more zeros in front of um, the number. So that would be the smallest. So we have 8.076 times 10 to the power of 7. Then our second number that one that's in the middle. Now these two have the same exponent, so the smaller one would be the one that's just simply the smaller number. 1.3034 times 10 to the 8th. And then our largest number is 7.8 times 10 to the 8th. All right, these next ones, I simply want you to plug in your calculator. So let's grab our calculator quick. Now there's a couple ways you could do this. Because this is all multiplication, this is multiplied and this is multiplied, if you wanted to, you could multiply these two numbers, just the decimals, and then know that you'd be multiplying by 10. Well, here's 2 and here's 6 more. You'd be multiplying by 10 8 times, and then you could convert that. Or you could just plug the whole thing in your calculator. I'm going to just simply plug it all in, just like it says, parentheses, 8.5 times 10. Now you can use the power of 2 button if you want, or the up arrow to get to the power of 2, and the parentheses, and then 1.7 times 10 to the power of 6, and I get, whoa, this big number there. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 zeros. So we have 14, 45, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 zeros. So if we convert this to scientific notation, because it says write your answer in scientific notation, we need 1.445, and we multiply by 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 
seven, eight, nine times to get right there. So if this was multiple choice, that would be the one you would pick. Next, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to plug this right into our calculator. Now, you can use a, an approximation um, in doing this um, longhand by writing it out two times and that sort of thing, but you don't need to. So 1.5 times 10 to the power, right here, power of negative 3, and then squared, or power of 2. Now, this is where some people get confused. Well, I didn't get a big number. Well, the number was too big or too long to fit into the calculator, so we um, have it already written in scientific notation. So that E right there means times 10 to the power of. So we have 2.25 E negative 6, which really means 2.25 times 10 to the power of negative 6. All right, two more. Now this is division, so we're going to do this whole piece in parentheses divided by this whole piece in parentheses. 1.2 times 10 to the power of 4, end parentheses, and then divided by, start your parentheses again, 1.6 times 10 to the power of negative 3. We get one, two, three, four, five zeros, so seven, five. And we're going to convert this to scientific notation, so 7.5 is between 1 and 10. And we multiply by 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 times. And then the second part, same thing. Put this in parentheses and divide it by this piece. So we have 4, oops, that's not 4, 4.5 times 10 to the power of 5 divided by 1.5 times 10 to the power of negative 2. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 zeros. And I'm going to, 3 is between 1 and 10, I'm going to multiply by 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 times. Now some of you might be just thinking, well, can't I just do some of this in my head? 4.5 divided by 1.5, well, you could plug this in your calculator if you wanted to. And you get 3. And then negative exponents, we would move to the top, so we have 10 to the power of 2 also on the top, so yes, we would have 7 tens on the top. So either way, you'll get the same answer. All right, next it says the images on a computer screen are made up of more than 5,000 pixels or dots per square inch. How many pixels are on the computer screen that measures 108 square inches? Write your answer in scientific notation. So 5,000 pixels per square inch. Um, so I'm just going to write that down here. 5,000 or one square inch. How many pixels are on a computer screen that measures 108 square inches? So if there's 108 square inches total and each inch has 5,000 pixels, we're just going to multiply it by 5,000. Because there's 5,000 in every square inch and there's 108 square inches. So we have 108 times 5,000 gives me 5, 4, and 4 zeros. So in scientific notation, we would want 5.4 times 10 to the power of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So is that, there's that many pixels on this one screen. It's 108 square inches. All right, the second half of our lesson is on square roots, rational and irrational numbers. This hopefully is mostly a review of things we did earlier this year, way back to the beginning of the school year. So first we look at real numbers. Real numbers are all the numbers we'll deal with in calculus. If I ever ask, ask you if a number is real, you will always tell me 
Yes, because all of our numbers are real. We don't have fake numbers. So these real numbers are broken up into two categories. They can be rational or they can be irrational. Rational numbers are more our normal numbers. Any fraction, any decimal, um, any counting number or whole number. We'll talk about those in a second. Irrational numbers are more of our crazy numbers that go on and on and on. They do not end and they do not repeat like pi or these square roots because if you look at your formula sheet hopefully during class today I had you write on your formula sheet oops where do we go here come on formula sheet here's our formula sheet hopefully I had you write like um, 1 times 1 is 1 so square root of 1 is 1 2 times 2 is 4 so the square root of 4 is 2 3 times 3 is 9 so the square root of 9 is 3 these are our perfect squares, the numbers underneath this square root, right? Because if 3 times 3 makes a square, 3 times 3 is 9. Well, look, that's a perfect square, 9. So we're looking at what are all of the perfect squares. And if I were you, I would list this out to at least 10, hopefully even 12. Some of you can go to 15 or 20. But my point of this is we can go on and on here. These numbers, like square root of 3, well, square root of 3 is not on that list. So that's not a perfect square. So that's why I said non-perfect squares. Square root of 18, same thing. Square root of 18 is not on here. It's not a perfect square. It's not a nice number. It's going to be some decimal that goes on and on and on. So those are our irrational numbers. Back to rational numbers for a second. These are our integers, any counting number by ones that you see on a number line. 0, 1, 2, 3, and negatives as well. Our whole numbers only start at 0 and go up this way, positives. Think of whole things you could have. I could have 0 whole jelly beans, 1 whole jelly bean, 2 whole jelly beans, 3 whole jelly beans, 4 whole jelly beans. We don't talk about um, whole things in terms of negatives. Like I ate negative two whole jelly beans. We don't talk like that. You said you ate, I ate two whole jelly beans. So whole numbers are only positives. And then any fraction or decimal um, that ends or repeats. So two and two thirds, if I plug that in my calculator, that would give me 2.666 and on and on, it would be 2.6 repeating. Or like this, uh, 0.5 it ends, negative 2.34 it ends, there's no numbers after it, there's no dot 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 after it, that would mean it goes on and on. So let's take a look here first. What is the square root of 36? Well, square root of 36 right here is just 6. Negative square root of 64, well, 64, oops, other way. Um, 8 times 8 is 64, so the square root of 4 is 8, so this is really a negative 8. Square root of 81, again, um, 9 times 9 is 81. We could go up to 10, 10 times 10 is 100 there. So the square root of 81 is 9. And then this last one, the fraction. Anytime you have a fraction, or a square root under a fraction there, you can split it up into two square roots. So the square root of 4, what times what gives you 4? Well, 2 times 2 is 4, and 5 times 5 is 25. So our answer is 2 fifths. Next, we're going to compare two numbers. Now, you could think which two numbers is the square root of 8 between, or let's get rid of that square root. To get rid of it, the opposite of a square root is a square, but if I do that to this number, I also have to do it to this number, just like an equation. So those will cancel and give me 8. 4 squared of 4 times 4 is 16, so which is bigger? Well, 16 is definitely bigger. Then over here, I don't know which one's bigger, so I'm going to get rid of this square root by squaring it. 3 times 3 is 9, and those cancel, and then you look just 10, so I know 10 is bigger. Now it says between which two consecutive integers is the square root located? So square root of 41. 41 is not on this list, but it would be between 36 and 49. So it would be between the square root of 36 and the square root of 49, 
Those aren't integers though, those are square roots. Remember our integers? Oops, too far. Are our counting numbers by ones? So what is the square root of 36? Well, it's 6 because 6 times 6 is 36. Square root of 49 is 7. So let's do another one. Square root of 136. My pen's going crazy here. If we were to keep going, 11 times 11 is 121, and 12 times 12 is 144. So 136 would be between 121 and 144. Or if I simplify that, it would be between 11 and 12. So I want you to try these last two. Click pause and then see if you got them right. So this next one should have been between the negative square root of 16, which is negative 4, and negative square root of 25, which is negative 5. So your answer would be like negative 4 point something, because it's between 4 and 5. And the last one, this would be between square root of 1 and square root of 4, which is really between 1 and 2. Alright, last page here. Classify numbers as real, rational, irrational, integer, and whole. It says hint, make a table. So I'm going to make a table here um, so I can fit all of these numbers in here and then label them as well. So for example, um, my numbers are square root of 3, 5.5, .5, negative square root of 16, and 0. And we're going to label them as real, rational, I'm going to abbreviate that, irrational, integer, and whole. So I told you any number that's real, all of our numbers are real, so that's like a free point. Then we have rational and irrational. You can't be both, it has to be one or the other. Remember, rational numbers are any fraction, any decimal, any counting number. Most numbers are rational numbers, okay? Irrational numbers are pi and square roots that are not perfect squares, most of the ones that were not on that list. So square root of 3, well, guess what? Square root of 3 was not on the list, remember? So that is irrational. It's a crazy number. So remember, these are normal crazy. 5.5, that's okay, it's a decimal, it ends, it's a normal number. Negative square root of 16, well, square root of 16 is really just 4, so this is really just negative 4, which is rational, it's a counting number. 0 is also a nice counting number, could be that uh, fraction if you wanted to. Then we have integers, these are numbers counting by 1s, um, I don't count by square roots, I don't count by decimals. I can count to negative 4 by 1s, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. And then um, our last one, 0, is also an integer. You can count to 0 by 1s, 0, 1, 2. And then last, whole numbers start at 0 and are only the positives. So it must be 0 and there aren't any positive counting numbers, so that's it. Alright, our last piece here. Order the numbers from least to greatest. So I'm going to write these all out because they look so similar. 0 0.47 repeating. 0 0.474 with all of them repeating. 0 0.47 with both repeating. And then we have the square root of 0.23. So I'm going to actually write each of these out multiple times. So for example, this first one would be 0 0.4, and then the 7 repeating, 7, 7, 7, and it would go on. The next one is 0 0.474. Notice I'm going to align like this way my digits so that I can see later which ones um, are able to compare next to each other. 
So I have 4, 7, 4, and then I'm going to do that again. 4, 7, 4. It could go again, 4, 7, 4. But all three are repeating. Then I have 0 0.47, and both are repeating. 4, 7, 4, 7, 4, 7. And then last, the square root of 23. I'm going to plug that in my calculator because I have no idea what that is. So second square root of 0.23 is 0 0.479583 4,7,9,5,8,3 and then it went on. So let's compare and figure out which one's the least. Let's look first at just our first digit. Well they're all fours so they're all the same. Then they're all sevens so they're all the same. Then in our third row our smallest one we have two fours. We have a four here and we have a four here. So we need to look next door to see which one's smaller. Is four four smaller or four seven? Well, four four must be smaller. It's less. So that's our least number. So I'm going to start making a list down here. 0 0.474 is the smallest. Then the other one with a four would be 0 0.47 with both repeating. Oops, I forgot to put the line there. So then we've taken care of the fours. Those ones were the smallest. Then seven would be the next smallest. 0 0.47, which is the seven repeating. And that leaves the nine to be the greatest. The square root of 0.23 would be our largest number. All right, your homework. Uh, front side is rational and irrational numbers. Um, these bottom two you need to look at a square. I will show you how to do that in class. And then the other side is just converting scientific notation.